Hey guys, I'm back with another new documentary because you guys wouldn't stop asking me for it. I hope you enjoy. Some footage in this video is from players around the community, as well as the music too. After the biggest update drought in Bee Swarm history, and not hearing from Onnit in over 10 and a half months, Onnit finally released something. A small update in the Bee Swarm test room that had a new bee in it. This sent waves through the community, and essentially made the game rise like a phoenix the very same day. After a few more weeks of continuous updates in the test room, and a contest to help Onnit balance hive colors, stakes were high because this was looking up to be the best beesmas ever. Soon, Onnit confirmed a release date of December 25th, Christmas Day. So when that day finally rolled around, everyone was super excited. After rushing downstairs and seeing their brand new hippopotamus in their garage, everyone hopped onto Beast One, eagerly waiting for the brand new update. Two hours quickly passed. No big deal. Onnit was probably just getting stuff ready, right? Another hour passed with people screaming in Discord for Onnit to update, to no avail. This is when the madness officially started. Discord was overflowing with players all ready for the update. Some were calling on it lazy, some were telling him to wake up, and others may have just been trying to stop the madness happening. Soon after the legend himself and the bees, he put a stop to everything with just one magic word. Stop. With this word, everyone froze. They all stopped. It also may have had something to do with the fact he closed, ev he closed every channel, but it was mostly just because he said stop. After the channel had become a moderator-only moderator meme channel for a few hours, the Discord had just gone dormant. A whole day passed with no activity. Nothing. Nothing at all. Until Onnit officially updated the game. The mods reopened the channels once and for all, and unleashed the hordes of players who held back their messages for a whole day. Players rushed into the channels, but also into the game, where all the new content had just been dropped. New quests, new areas, new bees, new bears, a whole bunch to explore. It's now that this video truly begins, so I welcome you to Beesmas 2021. Let's start off with the coolest thing added in this update by far, or should I say, the most dapper thing. A new bear who owned a little building just by the stump shop. This bear would help introduce players to nectar and show them the roots of planters. Now nah, that wasn't wrong. This building was, of course, the planter shop which carried new items called planters. Planters would add a whole new dynamic mechanic to the game called nectar. You could grow planters in any field, and depending on the field, you would get a different type of nectar. There were five types of these aforementioned nectars. Invigorating, comforting, refreshing, satisfying, and motivating. Each of these nectars could stack up to 24 hours and compound with each other, all giving unique buffs. Planters would also grant items when harvested. The amount and rarity of items depending on the field, planter, and also how much it was grown. There were 11 new types of planters added. Paper, ticket, blue clay, red clay, candy, pesticide, tacky, festive, petal, plastic, and of course, the new most expensive item in the game, the planter of plenty. Costing more than 990 times more in honey than the gummy boots and way expensive crafting resources than anyone really wants to admit. Some of these crafting resources were new, like caustic wax or turpentine. Caustic wax was a brand new type of wax that had a small chance of making a bee flip way better, or just downright destroying it. It, would craft, it was crafted from this, which as you can see, includes hard wax. Hard wax is just another new type of wax that improved b equip stats most of the time and was crafted from this. And as you can see, soft wax is in there. Soft wax was also a new type of wax that always increased the stats on the b equip you used it on, just by a little bit. And you could craft soft wax by using these items in the blender. You may not recognize this item. This item is of course, the honeysuckle. A brand new quality of life slash novelty item that would terrorize players all basements with the insane amount needed for the honeybees quest. The last new wax type item I haven't already mentioned is turpentine, an extremely expensive item that would wipe away all the wax on a bee equip. This item required a thousand honeysuckles, 
a task that was certainly no easy feat, nor was anything else needing, needed to craft this. Turpentine could be used in the recipe for one of the brand new collectors, the Gummy Baller. This collector could be purchased in the Gummy Lair for 10 trillion and 5 turpentine. This collector collected mass amounts of pollen from flowers, but it also collected goo. While collecting this goo from the field, it would charge up a gummy ball. After the gummy ball reaches a thousand times power, it would shoot a massive gummy ball all over the field for 12 seconds. This gummy ball would increase something called the gummy ball combo every time it hit the mark, a honey token, or the side of the field. Gummy ball combo would increase goo by up to a lot. Like it was a lot. Like multiple times. Like 20 times the amount of goo. Like it was crazy. But this was just one of the new collectors. There were still two others to talk about. The Tide Popper and Dark Scythe. So let's go over the Tide Popper first. The Tide Popper was the brand new blue collector that costed this and had a few new abilities. One of these abilities was a Tide Power slash Tide Blessing. Yes. Every bubble you popped would contribute to Tide Power, a small boost that increased collector speeds by up to two times. And after reaching 500 charges, it would start an ability called Tidal Surge. This would create a big wave at every swing of the Tide Popper, which gave a small boost called Tide Blessing, and also converted balloons into honey tokens. There was also another collector, the Dark Scythe, for red. This scythe costed this, and unlocked a new thing called Dark Flames. When swinging the tool, this little swoosh thingy would appear. If this little swoosh thingy hit any flames, they would turn purple, and become Dark Flames. Dark flames would multiply super crit power and help to build up something called Scorching Star, which everyone knows a bit faster. That was it for the collectors, so now for the new mechanic that no one likes, Puff Shrooms. You see, Puff Shrooms are special in their own way. Puff Shrooms are one of the reasons why I've heard players hate this business. When explaining them, it's simple. You have 5 minutes to level up those shrooms as much as possible by collecting pollen. Whenever you defeat a puff shroom, it will multiply by spores and also give you a bit of loot. This loot could be fruits, waxes, or even turpentine. There were 5 tiers of puff shrooms. Normal, Rare, Epic, Mythic, and Legendary. The latter of which would torment players all business because Gummy Bear had a new quest that required players to defeat 5 legendary puff shrooms which no one could do. Other than honeysuckles, there were some other new novelty items as well, such as the whirly gig, which would teleport players and their bees back to the hive, allowing them to convert a little bit faster. There were also two new types of dice, the smooth dice, which boosted two fields to 200%, and the loaded dice, which boosted three fields to 300%, and had a bias towards the field that you were currently standing in. While writing the script, my stream chat said that I was forgetting to mention the two new most important items in the game. These were, of course, the buoyant bee and the precise bee. These two new bees introduced a few new mechanics in the game, like super crit and balloons. Balloons are a thing that the buoyant bee can generate well in the field if you collect its inflate balloons ability. When a balloon is filled or reaches its time limit, which increases with buoyant bee level, it would slowly float to the player's hive. When a balloon reaches the player's hive, it becomes part of the hive balloon. The hive balloon will float in place, waiting to be converted. Once the player begins converting, their bees will first convert anything in their bag before beginning to convert the hive balloon. The hive balloon grants bonus blessing, or balloon blessing, when fully converted, which grants capacity, honey at the hive, and honey from tokens, sometimes. The buffs are given an increase as the pollen needed for another stack increases. The balloons also had a chance to be golden. Golden bubbles are able to buff bubbles that they pass over, turning them into golden bubbles. Golden bubbles collect 1.5% more, 1.5 times more pollen, they're very good. Contribute 50% more time to bubble boat and have a 25% chance to create a honey token equal to the amount of pollen the bubble collected. These can literally convert billions. You could also summon balloons yourself by using a pink, red, black, or white balloon item. These worked the same as normal balloons, but you could barely get them. The other new mechanic belonged to the precise bee, and it was super crit. 
which was just a critical, but super rare. The precise bee would fly up above the field after collecting your precision token and create three targets on the field. The player would have two runs through would would have to run through all three of the targets to be granted a precision stack, and they'd have to do it before the precise bee shot its shots. So you had give or take six seconds. A stack of precise would grant a two percent super crit chance and could stack up to ten times. That's it for the new stuff, but there's still plenty to cover change-wise. If I missed anything, please feel free to yell at me in the comments, but for now, I'm going to quickly list off all the changes, because if I'm not fast, this video could be an hour. Windshine buffed to 30 minutes, but buffs were slightly changed. Jelly beans are useless now, I'm just kidding, but seriously though, the buffs were very heavily nerfed. You can now guarantee a double pass by using 500 billion at the SSA generator instead of needing to roll 10 million by 10 million for a 1 in 50 chance. Paper blender was added to the pineapple shop, blue clay was added to the blue HQ, red clay was added to the red HQ. Frogs can now be gifted the tadpole bee is gifted as well, with a 20% chance. Petal planters added to the petal shop. The boost market was removed, and the nectar pop pot was added instead. There's now a 7th hotbar slot. Amulets and passives and gear moved to the bottom. Bee menu redesigned. Candles can now give all types of waxes rather than just swirled wax. Treat menu changed. New buttons. Permanent capacity on some SSA passives added. Tons of gifted abilities changed. Some badges were also reworked. That's it for the changes, although I may have missed some. Those are the important ones. Because of this update, blue became broken and will probably be nerfed in the near future, although that's not important. One important thing is that there will be a new update very soon that has some new color-specific sprinklers and perhaps even color-specific backpacks. This next update will be a very big one, so look forward to it. I decided not to mention new quests in the video, so that's why there was not any new Beatsmith quests. I wanted to thank everyone for the huge support in the last few weeks, and I wish everyone a good day. I enjoyed making this documentary, and I hope you enjoyed wa watching it.